Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 14986. This build includes a number of features and enhancements over the last public preview build which was build 14971. Now, you may have noticed it's been a while since I've done one of these build walkthroughs and that's simply because Microsoft were being really quite boring with their new builds and not including any new features worth talking about. However, that changes with build 14986. Yes, this build has new changes, new features and awesome things that I can actually demo to you. So we'll be doing just that today. I'll also be taking a look at some of the older changes that did show up in the previous builds that weren't big enough to warrant a build video. So if you've seen some of them from build 14971 and 65 and 59, I know I'm just, you know, collecting them all in this build video as well. But we will start with the Cortana improvements. So diving straight in, Cortana is actually kind of useful now in build 14986. She has system commands, so you can use your voice to tell her to restart the PC, shut down the PC and do some other things I imagine. So yes, you can see restart, lock, or put the system to sleep. So if I say, hey Cortana, she should pop up. Now you'll also notice that there's a new microphone icon down here, which is very, very modern and kind of matches the rest of Windows 10 now. And uh, there's also a new idle mode. So if I say, hey Cortana now, once I've you know pressed on a button, you'll see that she pops up in our normal, hey Cortana configuration. Hey Cortana, tell me a joke. Time flies like an arrow, fruit flies like a banana. There's your terrible joke. Now she also has an idle mode as well. So if I leave the computer for say 10 seconds or so, which should be about now. Hey Cortana, tell me a joke. What do you get when you cross a vampire with a snowman? Frostbite. And that's your hilarious joke. So this is the new idle mode. She just takes up your full screen, which is excellent for devices that are communal and sits uh, in, a, say, a kitchen, for example, and you can use your voice commands from across the room and actually see what's happening on the screen rather than have it in that little tiny boring wind, uh, you know, Cortana, mini Cortana when you are actually using the desktop normally. So now Cortana can also do things such as play music and not only from Groove, you can do it from iHeartRadio and TuneIn Radio. Now, this is only for the Americans. So anybody in the United States, this is for you. Outside of the United States, doesn't work just yet. I assume it will at some point. But if you're using a United States enabled PC, you should be able to try this out now. So I can say, hey Cortana, play Christmas music from iHeartRadio. Playing 93.9 My FM Chicago on iHeartRadio. And in theory, she would be playing music at this point, but since I am not American, as you can probably tell by my accent, it won't work. So, yes, if you're an iHeartRadio or TuneIn Radio person, hooray, it works for you now. Uh, and you can also use Groove Music as well, I assume, which is very, very nice. Uh, she can do things play artist track, title, genre. Uh, on the app name, play Drake on iHeartRadio, for example, play Christmas music on iHeartRadio, play NPR hourly news on TuneIn, or play jazz music on TuneIn. So that's just a few examples of what Cortana can do now. Oh yes, I forgot to showcase the, uh, the system command. So I can say, for example, hey Cortana, lock my PC. That is not what I said, Cortana. Hey Cortana, lock my PC. Are you kidding me? My accent doesn't like Cortana in the US. Hey Cortana, lock my- Hi there. Pre-release stuff, guys. Hey Cortana, lock my PC. Locking your computer. <laughs> Ray, so using an American accent will get these features to work apparently. So yes, you can do locking the PC, restarting the PC and shutting down the PC with voice commands now, which is very nice. Uh, so yeah, again, this is preview software, guys, and uh, only works in the United States for now again. So my accent is probably causing it to mess up quite a bit, but should be coming to more areas at some point down the line. I would hope so anyway, otherwise that'd be pretty sad. So if you actually dive into Cortana here, you can see that she's also got a couple more things in her actual... UI here. So you can see got Cortana on your phone. This is a new sort of uh, prompt you get. So you can text a download link to your phone for the Cortana app, which you can get on Google Play and the App Store. Now, uh, there's no link for the Windows Phone version, but that's only because Cortana is built directly into Windows 10 Mobile. You can see down here it says notification syncing works on Android and Windows Phone. 
Interestingly, Microsoft is using the term Windows Phone here, which they kind of haven't been using as of late. They like to use Windows 10 Mobile. Regardless, Windows Phone with a capital P is low, is listed here, interestingly enough. Uh, but yes, if you're an Android or iOS user, Microsoft is now advertising Cortana on your phone, which is excellent because it means people who don't use Windows Phone can sync notifications across their PC. Only works on Android, though. Apple and their walled garden do not allow it. But Cortana can be kind of helpful on iOS with calendar alerts and other stuff. So if you're an iPhone user, definitely give that a try. Uh, and then, of course, you just jump into your normal Cortana UI. If we go into settings here, you can see there's a couple more options. Let Cortana respond to Hey Cortana, which is uh, not new. But then here we go. Keep my keep my device from sleeping when plugged in so I can always say Hey Cortana unless I turn it off for myself. So I have mine plugged in here so she will be constantly listening uh, without draining power. If I disconnect, of course, she will no longer be listening if I leave my if I lock my PC and leave it to go to sleep. And that's pretty much it for Cortana, I believe. So a lot of cool improvements coming to Cortana. Very exciting indeed. Now, if we jump into the next changes, if I can pull them up. Yes, the Windows Game Bar has been improved. Now, I can't actually demo this because this is an old Surface Pro and doesn't actually have a good graphics card in it. But actual Win32 games should now, a lot more of them should now support the Windows Game Bar. So if you're a gamer, that's excellent news for you. So Windows Inc. has also seen some improvements in build 40 and 986. With this being the creator's update, Windows Inc. is kind of a big deal for Microsoft. So it's not surprising to see them continue to work on this. One of the new features is that it now has a previous screen sketches area. So if you jump up here, you can see I was working on uh, this screen sketch earlier with the start screen. And now I can circle this and say, ha ha, apps, which is very, very nice. So that's one of the new features there. So history, for example. Another one is if we jump into the actual other area here. Oh, that's a feature I'm talking about in a minute. Uh, if we jump in there, you can see that we now have updated ink flyouts. The Windows Ink Pen, Pencil and Highlighter flyouts now show a preview of what it will look like. So if we go here, you can see um, that's what my ink will look like now. So it gives me a nice preview there. Same for Pencil and same for that one, Highlighting. Very, very nice indeed. Other changes include the that the roof that the ruler has a more fine control. So degrees here, you can see I want to go to exactly 21 degrees rotation. There you go. You can do that now, which is fantastic. And another just smaller change. The cursor will no longer show up when you're inking, which is a thing that it did before. So just fine tuning the experience, basically. Updated rendering technology. Now, this isn't really a change that you will notice on the surface, but Microsoft behind the scenes are working on an updated rendering engine for apps, which basically doesn't mean much. Microsoft says we've changed the rendering technology used for many types of universal Windows platform app content. So please provide feedback through the feedback hub if you notice any visual glitches in the universal Windows platform apps. For additional context on this change, we are now widely using the same windows.ui.composition API that app developers have access to for XAML, UWP apps and shell rendering. So if you're a developer, that probably sounds like amazing news to you. However, as a consumer, that sounds like a different language to me. So if you enjoy developing UIs and rendering engines, this is a change for you. There's also narrative improvements, which I won't dive into. There's more accessibility stuff. Uh, Microsoft also has a huge focus on accessibility improvements with the creators update. If you want to know more, you can check out Windows Central on those changes. Now, moving on to another change, Microsoft has updated the Windows Defender app to be a modern universal app now. Yes, uh, although it doesn't seem to be uh, accessible directly from the icon just yet. So you can see here, this is Windows Defender. If I open it, it still brings up the old Win32. Or it did at least. Well, it's not working now, but it does bring up the old Win32 UI. However, if you type in Windows Defender, see there it is. If you type in Windows Defender into, that's Windows, Windows Defender into Cortana here, you will see that there should be a trusted Windows Store app selected by default. And if I hit enter on that, you should get a new user interface. So Windows Defender is making some improvements. We're working hard on adding new features and finishing our new look. So not everything is quite ready yet. So again, this is previous software basically. And wow, it looks kind of neat. So it works like dark mode if you're using dark mode on your PC. The app will obviously look dark like it does here. If you're using light mode, it will look light. Hamburger menu, if everybody loves those. 
Virus and threat protection, scan history. I can scan now if I want to. Firewall and network protection. Family option. So big push on family stuff with the creators update. Uh, this is kind of tying into Home Hub, which if you don't know anything about, you can check out Windows Central. We've got a great article on what Home Hub is. Essentially, Microsoft is making Windows 10 a much more family friendly with Home Hub uh, in this release and in future releases in 2017. So, um, yeah, check out Windows Central for more information on that. But it looks like Windows Defender is getting some family treatment as well, which is fantastic. There's also been an update to how Windows decides to install updates now i can't demo this since there were no updates available via the system but no longer will windows be vicious and just forcefully restart in say 10 minutes after not installing any updates many gamers who stream have this issue all the time in the sense that they'll be streaming during their weekly streams or whatever and windows will prompt them that they have to restart in 10 minutes and give them no other alternative so that's fun that's being changed. Microsoft will now allow the option to schedule the updates at a later date or just ask me later. And I don't know how many times Microsoft will allow you to press ask me later. I doubt it will be many because updates are a big deal for Windows 10 and they need to be installed at some point. So I guess it will postpone maybe once or twice before it's like, okay, you really need to schedule this update now. And then it will go ahead and do the update once you schedule it. So it's giving you the option at least to push it back, which is very nice. So if you're in the middle of something really important, such as a presentation or a game streaming session on Beam.pro, it will no longer forcefully do it whilst you're in the middle of something, which is very, very nice indeed. Lots of improvements to Windows 10 in Asia. I cannot demo most of these, so check out the Windows blog for all of those changes. And then there's just some minor improvements as well, which are very, very nice indeed. Now, let's take a look at some of the uh, smaller improvements that showed up in the builds prior to 14.986, such as the trackpad down here. This is a virtual trackpad. So if you're using a virtual machine, for example, or a device that has a broken trackpad with a touchscreen, of course, you can now still use Windows with this on screen. Now, I know you can't see me using it, but I am actually using the trackpad on screen here. I'm coming down to the start, now pressing on that button. Yes, it's very nice, works like you would expect. So excellent for touchscreens, devices that have broken trackpads or just don't have trackpads at all and people who much prefer using a mouse rather than their finger. So that is fantastic. The Paint app has uh, been, well, I say Paint app, the Paint program, the program that has been on every version of Windows since 19... 95 even no the first version of windows even has uh, been updated to paint 3d and i mean that in the sense that even the old windows paint apps if we're going to paint here you can see it launches paint 3d yes that upsets me too but it's time to move on i'm afraid so yes uh launching paint from the windows start menu will now bring up the paint 3d one rather than the uh, the old paint.exe, which uh, some might be upset about. I know I am, because I like the old paint.exe. It's very simple, basic, does exactly what I needed it to do. But uh, it's time to move on, I guess. It's time to update to the 3D environment with Windows 10. Uh, speaking of 3D, there's also a View 3D app, which automatically installed itself on my device with this update. Where is it? I don't know what this does. I guess it... Yeah, so you can basically just open things created in paint 3d which is i guess a thing i have not built anything in 3d yet so i can't demo that but yes that's basically everything that i haven't covered since my last build video so thanks so much for watching guys and i shall see you in the next one bye bye